was all started a long time ago, uh, back in the 60s and 70s, when uh, there was a group of us that had a, we had a round robin, which is a group of letters that circulate through a group. There's about 12 of us in that group. And what we were finding is that the nurseries were selling the plants under the wrong name, or in a different name, from one nursery to another. And so about 1970-71, uh, we got Mrs. Crane, uh, she, you know the, the Crane Paper Company that makes paper for dollar bills? Mrs. Crane owned that paper company. And she had more money than God. <laughs> <laughs> and she had this mansion in Dalton, Massachusetts that went on probably 30, 40 acres, all beautifully landscaped. And she became interested in Sempervive or Sempervadin, depending on which school of pronunciation you go for. And so uh, Bill Nixon and I went up to her, to her place to see her Semps one time and presented this as a problem to her. And she realized it was a problem because she was buying things from other nurseries and getting things that looked to be the wrong names, too. So she set up this area that was the size of a football field. And she asked all the nurseries in the country that sold Semper Vivum to send what they thought was named whatever that plant was. And she grew each one of those plants of that particular name in a very close area. She also made a soil mix that was identical over this whole football <laughs> field size area. She had, as I said, she had more money than God. <laughs> and, and so they planted all these varieties out. At that time, the Semper Vivum Society in England was being formed, and they had what they call uh, the type collection. They were to produce taking specimens and growing them in pots and, and designating this as the type specimen for any all of these SEMPs. So we got Peter Mitchell to send 330 of the SEMPs that he had as a comparison for the ones that we were selling by these same names or different names in this country to try to sort it all out. Mm -hmm. We would make the visits to this planting three or four times a year. And we thought at first it was going to be an easy thing. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. Mm -hmm. um, some of the plants from Peter Mitchell looked like nothing that the U.S. nurseries were selling. Mm -hmm. Now it could be that his plant was wrong and that we were right all along, but the fact that he was now the authority who we were going to kowtow to him and let these plants be named with his name since he was maintaining this type of election. So anyway, we, this took two or three years of going to Mrs. Crane's these many times, looking at the plants and trying to just determine if, if in fact the plant for Peter Mitchell matched or did not match the ones from the U.S. nurseries. And what we came up with is on the second page of the sheet here is all these different criteria that we had to look at in each one of these particular plants in order to tell whether it was the same or not. And some, as, as someone mentioned in the, when we were going through the yard that describing the shapes of these is very difficult. There actually weren't words out there to describe what is many leaves growing upright how do you say that in one word? Well, there isn't one word for that. So, so we had to write kind of longer written descriptions for each of these. But we had to go through the entire patch using these criteria, writing, taking notes, taking measurements of all these different varieties. And we finally came down that some nurseries had the right plants, others didn't. Others had mixes of things. As you know, when you let these things go to seed, they fall down, and you'll get seedlings coming up everywhere, and suddenly that grows up and looks kind of like what the parent was, and you might just throw that in the bag, and so someone else gets that seedling of so-and-so. that was, It was close, but not the same thing as the original. And so we had a lot, we used to see a lot of that. From a certain nursery in Ohio, we got plants that were a mix. We would send a crump of a plant, that he was selling as blank, and there would be six different cultivars, oh. six different seedlings in that one. One of them was right, but the rest of them were wrong. Mm -hmm. So things were just a, a total mess at this point. But 
one of the other things, good things that came out of this was that it also gave us a way of looking at a new cultivar to say what characteristics of it should we be fostering to promote a new cultivar. What things are good in a cultivar, what things are bad. And by using these same things, the same criteria we used to compare whether a variety was true, we could also come up with criteria for what makes it a better one. One of the chief things we wanted was distinction. We wanted to be able to have Semper Vivum that you could say, 10 feet away, oh, I know what that one is, it's blank. And for most of the senses, you well know, that's not possible. <laughs> there's a lot that looked the same. In fact, there was, I don't know how many of you grow it, but there was one named Ward's Number Two, and it was green with purple tips. And Mrs. Kramer gets silly and say, well, that's Ward's Number 54, because we all had that many that were just like Ward's Number Two, <laughs> green with purple tips. And there was every shade of variegation, and none were terribly distinctive. But that was kind of the state of the art back in the early 70s. So when we started crossing, we, we actually had a fairly wide open field because there were so many things that weren't very distinctive. We were also, for the first time, getting some of the more rare plants from Europe. Originally, what we were dealing with in America here was Tectorum, Montanum, Arachnoidium, and Wolfenium, and hybrids between them. And so it was a fairly narrow genetic pool. But as the new plants came in from Europe, kind of the, the wild collective thing, we began to incorporate those into the, into the breeding as well. The Heufelii that we had at this time in this country, really there were three that we had at this time in this country. That seems amazing now when there are hundreds. We had three of them in 1970. Wow. So, so that's been kind of a revolution in terms of how the SEMPs have gone in this country. So as I said, we want things that are distinctive. As Cinda and all, all the dealers have sure heard a million times, I've got the green one. <laughs> and, and so we wanted anything but at that point. And so and I think that's kind of our criteria now. Although I think we have actually swung almost so much the other way that we have lots of reds and purples now, and we don't have a lot of really interesting green ones. So I think we actually have swung the other way around. 